answer that I received, 733 pounds, has a negative. Do you see that? That carries a negative. That came out to be a, ne a negative 733. That negative, this is very important, the negative simply, um, simply says that uh, the, the initial uh, assumption regarding the direction of the force was not correct. And even though I assumed FBC to be pulling away from the joint, but the answer comes out to be negative, that negative says, no, no, this is not pulling away from the joint. It's the opposite. And that's why my analysis tells me it's not pulling away from the joint. It's indeed pushing towards the joint that makes it in compression. That's how you decide whether it's in tension or compression. All right? Now, before we move on to the next slide, I need for you to help me with something. Uh, if I ask you to please find the answer to, uh, find the force in member HG. HG. How would you, how would you solve it? I want you to help me find the force in HG. Tell me what is your recommendation. Well, we would, we would use the method of uh, sections. And in fact, I will use the same section. And I would use the same free body diagram. So Matthew and uh, Ian are making suggestions. They are telling me in order to find the force in HG, the quickest uh, way to do it would be to write the moment about the point B. And that indeed is correct, guys. I want you to pay attention. If we are lo uh, looking for the force in HG, this bottom member, and you choose to use the method of sections, and you use this free body diagram that I'm showing you, the quickest way would be to write the moment about the point B. All right? Uh, what you need to do, sum the moments about the point B. And why that's so helpful is because it will eliminate both BC and BG, because they both go through uh, the point B. All right? So we will eliminate those two forces. The only force that, sh uh, that remains in the equation would be the force in HG, which is the, the unknown. So one equation, one unknown. Now, the question may arise that you may ask me, can we write the moment about the point B? Because B is not part of this free body diagram. Well, uh, B is not part of this free body diagram. But you know, for equilibrium, for this truss, this portion of the truss that we are using as free body diagram, for that to be in equilibrium and stable, it should, the moment about any point on the, uh, let's say, the, this screen, that plane of the screen, the moment would have to be equal to 0. B certainly satisfies that. So yes, you can sum the moments about the point B, and uh, you will have that, that uh, HG. Do it on your own. Do it on your own. See if you can get it. Now let's move on to member DG. Next, I want you to help me, please, find the force in member DG, which is that diagonal. Which method would you use? Sections or uh, method of joints? Method of sections would be the, the ideal one. And in this case, I'm showing you the section that I've chosen. You cut through CD, GD, and GF. All right? The free body diagram is at the, at the bottom. Do you agree with that? You should, because it is correct. And um, so that's the free body diagram. In this case, I chose the, free body, uh, the section to the right of the cut. Now, I want everybody to pay attention. How would you do this? Helen, what would, in your opinion, what, is, what would be the best way to solve for the force in DG? There are several ways of doing it. I'm interested in sharing with you the quickest the most direct, all right? Uh, 
Paul is saying uh, sum the forces in the y direction. And Paul is indeed correct. Paul is saying the quickest way to solve for the force in dg, which is that diagonal, would be to sum the forces in the y direction. Helen says a moment about the point F. Well, yes, that is possible. But um, the problem with that is that um, there will be two unknowns in that equation. Look at it. The force in CD would cause a moment about the point F. So will the force in DG. All right? So even though that's correct, but it will be multi-step solution. However, if we go with Paul's suggestion of summing the forces in the y direction, then uh, what happens is it, it, what happens is that we will only have uh, we will only have one equation because how many unknowns do we have in the y direction? Only two, only two. Because one, you got it. One is the y component of the force in dg. And the only other force in the y direction is this reaction at E, RR. Nothing else. You may ask, what about the force in FD? All right, think about it. What about the force in FD? That would have a vertical force. Well, yes, but have we cut that? We have not. As long as a member stays intact, the force in that member does not become exposed and we don't have to worry about it. You can also say the same thing about DE. DE has a force in, in the y direction. But once again, have we cut that? No. So as long as it stays intact, we don't have to worry about that. All right. So uh, the, the, the most direct is summing the forces in the y direction. In fact, on page uh, 13, I'm showing that. Sum the forces in the y direction for the entire free body diagram for this entire section. All right? Uh, and as you can see, RR is equal to minus DGY. That's equal to zero. All right? So then DGY would be equal to 275 pounds. Pay very close attention here. DGY, that's the Y component of the force in member DG. That's 275 pounds. That is not the answer, though. That's not the force in GD. That's only the Y component of the force in GD. All right? So. Now that we have the y component of the force in dg, then we can use, remember I told you the geometry of the truss is given. So just use a similar triangle situation. dgy over dg is equal to 3 over 5. 3 and 5, it's, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. It was given to us at the very, the first slide that talked about this slide, or this truss, all right? So uh, solve the force in member DG, it comes out to be 458 pounds, all right? And whether it's tension or compression, well, guys, look, we assume DGY to be pulling away from the joint D, all right? It came out to be positive, 458 positive. So since it came out to be positive, that says the initial assumption was indeed correct, so it is, uh, it is, uh, intention. Helen, I'm not sure. Um, the summation about the point uh, support F would indeed be equal to zero. I'm not sure exactly what you're asking me. But uh, let me, guys, I want to uh, talk to you about a few things here that are very, very important. On the test, if if this problem was indeed on the test, the answer more than likely would not have been 458 pounds. All right? It would have been probably 460. The way that the, the answers are in the, on the exam, they round the numbers up. All right? So, for example, if the answer comes out to be 458, they will, they will give you 460, and they would say, uh, uh, 
So more than likely, more than likely, it's going to be they will give you 460, but they will say it's closest to. All right. So they will say the answer is closest to 460. So they won't give you 458, and that's for for rounding purposes. There's one other thing that I want to tell you. This is very, very important. I'm going to tell you now, but this applies to every topic, every problem that we will, we will tell you from uh, here on. Uh, Ryan is saying the, uh, on the test, they say most nearly, most nearly uh, 460. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is what's going to happen, guys. You know, each problem, no matter what topic, they're giving you four answers. Out of the four, one is correct, and the other three obviously are not correct. But those other three, they don't just pull those other three wrong answers out of a hat. Those three wrong answers, in fact, they call them distractors. And I, I used to I used to design problems for the exam, but I don't anymore. However, uh, you know when when I or when anybody submits a, a question for the PE exam, on the the first top sheet you show the example and describe the problem, and then the second sheet you show very clearly the steps in solving the problem to get the correct answer. And then there are three other sheets that I have to attach. And each one, I'm showing exactly what I did to come up with those, each of those wrong three answers. And this is really important for you to understand that those three answers, they, they come up with those wrong ones by following commonly made mistakes. They project and they decide what is what is a way that, that uh, most people would make a mistake here, and then definitely one of those would be a distractor, and there would be one of the three uh, wrong answers. And I sh I mentioned that here because guys, pay attention. If you solve this problem the way I I presented it to you, and then you came up with DGY, the Y component of DG to be 275. You come up with that number, you get excited, you look at the four choices, the first one is 275. You get really excited because you got a match. You got a match, but it's wrong. Do you see what I'm saying? So they want to make sure that you recognize this is the Y component, then you have to follow this other step in order to find the force in DG. So watch for those distractors. All the sessions that I cover, I will show you. I will definitely show you uh, the possible ways, common ways, that the people who design the problems, they come up with distractors. All right? one, one very popular way is units. Not not making a conversion, proper conversion. All right, that's that's a very popular way to come up with these distractors. What I want you to do is, please, uh, when you when you study on your own, uh, try to ask yourself if you were if you were designing this problem, how would you come up with distractors? All right, and if you do that, if you make that part of your your study. Uh, then, then you will you will uh, look for them, and you will be able to successfully identify them. All right, this is very very uh, important point. All right, next I'm going to cover um, shear and moment diagrams. Explicitly, shear and moment diagrams are uh, indeed uh, listed on the NCEES topics that will be on the test. So. Um, remember shear and moment diagrams. Uh, it's a uh, uh, basically a process where you have to draw the entire shear diagram or the, uh, the entire moment diagram. However, please remember the exam is multiple choice. All right, so they cannot give you a beam like this 